It's right here in Miramar. We actually have with us Mayor Wayne M. Messam, a frequent guest to the show. So welcome back, Mayor Messam. Thank you. And Romeo Lavars, the emergency manager for the city with our fire department. They are both here to give us updates on what is happening with truly what has become our new normal, dealing with the coronavirus and how this is going to affect the city of Miramar. So again, welcome to the show, Mayor. And I know that you actually declared a state of emergency last weekend. Tell us a little bit about that. Yes, on this past Saturday, March 14th, um, I declared a state of emergency along with the city manager, um, which by our city code, we have the exclusive authority to do so. And we take these extreme measures um, typically, um, and what most residents are used to is when we are preparing for a wind event, like a hurricane. Um, but this is a uh, obviously a unique scenario in terms of dealing with um, the coronavirus and COVID-19 um, that we felt that based off of what has been taking place, not only nationally in the state, but right in our own community, um, that we should make the provisions to declare a state of emergency. Now, the state of emergency allows us to do several things. Okay. Um, First, it puts the public on notice that there is an emergency event taking place. Um, it also allows the city to align our assets and resources so that we can keep the community safe. And, and third, it allows us to be in a position to be reimbursed for uh, many of the services that we have to uh, put in place to provide to the public. Okay. Um, because when you have the state of Florida has also declared a state of emergency and our federal government has done that as well. Um, it allows us to align our resources, our strategies, and our protocols with the resources that have been given out to um, the public to be able to access them. Okay, and I know that as of yesterday, we had 173 cases in Florida, 43 cases in Broward County. We had the most in the state. Uh, next closest is Miami-Dade with 32 cases. And of course, that's because we are the most populous um, counties in the state. I know Romeo, that you guys, you know, went right after this emergency declaration, you guys went into overdrive with what we needed to do as a city. Um, what has been what you guys have been doing as the emergency manager and with the fire department? Because I know you guys are going to you're going to get those calls. That's true. What we've done is that we've implemented a prevention and awareness strategy. We, as everyone knows, you know, prevention through good hygiene. Uh, we're always promoting that, okay. as well as awareness, uh, reaching out to all the community. When we talk about the all community, the businesses, the faith-based organizations, uh, our elderly population, mm -hmm. getting the word out to them on what they should do in order to avoid contamination from the uh, COVID-19. Okay. And with people who are suspecting that they may have it, because mm -hmm. now if you have a cold or just a small cough, people automatically assume that you have some you know, disease now. Yeah. Uh, what do you say to the people who are calling in to 911 for that? <laughs> yeah. What we do is that we in, we've already implemented a policy so that when we receive those calls, we're given the dispatchers now uh, ask a series of questions so that it gives them some intel if the, if we're possibly dealing with a, a COVID-19 mm -hmm. situation. Um, but Overall, we have seen a little spike in the volume of calls, mm -hmm. but a lot of people have taken it upon themselves to take themselves in, uh, quarantine themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, there's been a lot of good information out there. Some have gone to their doctors, some have been diagnosed. So a lot of this has already been taken place from the local level. Okay. Mm -hmm. And Mayor, I know that a lot of people also want to know what is gonna happen if this happens in our city, yeah. as far as with the employees like or the residents, will they still be able to get services from the city? Uh, this situation is a very serious matter. Uh, when you contemplate that Broward County has the most confirmed positive cases of coronavirus in the entire state, and with Miramar being the fourth largest city in Broward, um, that is one of the reasons why um, I have moved forward in declaring on um, this, this emergency because we cannot take anything for granted. Absolutely. Uh, it's so important for the community to recognize what the threats are. Um, because the, um, the federal government um, not being in an ideal scenario to be able to have testing kits readily available for everyone and for our healthcare um, institutions like mm -hmm. Memorial Health Systems as well as our state health departments to have the infrastructure in place to have these um, to have these testings available 
That is why it's such a great concern because there are many uh, people that may be carriers or positive of coronavirus and don't even know it. They may be presenting some symptoms, but because they're not fully aware of what all the symptoms are mm -hmm. and our inability to test everyone so that we can definitively know who's positive and who's not okay. is why there's such a great threat. So that is why the city, um, along with our um, emergency management uh, personnel, as well as um, following the, guide the guidance is from the CDC and our state of Florida Health Department, are educating the public in terms of personal hygiene to take place, um, identifying what residents are most at risk. So for example, picture this person, let's say if you're 65, Okay. Um, and you have flu-like symptoms, a fever, coughing, you've traveled um, to a location or a country that is known to have a high um, number of um, positive cases, as or maybe a family member that may have traveled. Travel. Mm -hmm. You know, these are low-hanging fruit. These are the people that are most at risk, and that uh, these are the individuals that have been uh, are placed on the top of the priority um, to be tested. Um, the the governor is working um, with, I know right now in Broward County with Memorial Health Systems to uh, put in place um, some drive-through um, testing um, okay. stops and areas. Uh, we know that these, um, um, on the phone call with the governor yesterday, he, and she informed us that, um, that uh, these will be priority for our elderly um, patients as well as for the uh, health care our healthcare uh, professional, because these are the, one, the healthcare professionals, the front line. We have to have as many healthy healthcare professionals available mm -hmm. to be able to treat the public. And then two, the, our elderly uh, residents and citizens are most at risk um, in terms of those who show the, um, the most, or the highest mortality rates after being contracted with this disease. So, so is that why the city went ahead and postponed a lot of the events that you know they usually have during this time um, as well as the parks and I know uh, there's none of those events going on but the mm -hmm. parks are still open there are some things that are still open. Yes and it's, it's consistent with what healthcare professionals put in place when you're dealing with the pandemic. Uh, you want to eliminate any possibility of exacerbating or facilitating community spread. That means that someone is infected and because of their day-to-day -day interactions with people and obviously if you're having you know multiple or large events like all of our city events. That is why we canceled. The city did not want to be in a position to have community events bringing a large number of people into one setting and someone being positive and then there's a ripe environment to spread the virus. Okay. And so I would love to also talk to you, Romeo, about some of the rumors that are <laughs> going around. Uh, there is no countywide lockdown, right? right That's now. correct. Yes. And all Grocery stores are still open. Yes, they are. <laughs> now, everyone knows that the Publix, for instance, cl they're closing at 8 in order to give their crews enough time to restock Not, and mm -hmm. to clean. Mm -hmm. So that there was a rumor about their supply chain being interrupted. Their supply chain won't be interrupted at okay. all. So mm -hmm. that's always been, uh, that they've always been on top of that. Okay. And then um, we also just got, uh, I believe it was yesterday, that the governor put out that bars it will not be open or they're closing the bars early, which is, I don't know if that's good mm -hmm. news or not. <laughs> well, actually, bars that, and nightclubs. Well, that was this press conference just today, just mm -hmm. a couple of hours ago. Uh, mm -hmm. The governor has instituted an order to close all bars and nightclubs on wow. beginning at 5 p.m. Um, today. Wow. Um, and that is for obvious, obvious reasons. Um, so um, the city of Miramar, we are um, paying very close attention to orders that are coming from Tallahassee. Um, in fact, um, as a municipality, we have the option to go even stricter than what may be recommendations that may come um, from the state of Florida to ensure that Miramar is in the best position um, to be um, to, to keep our residents safe. Um, but restaurants are allowed to be open. They can yeah. deliver food. You can do takeout. Um, but in terms of in dining and large um, restaurants, um, that will not you know, be allowed. And we're just asking people to, you know, to, to make the, the best judgment. Now, in terms of some of our small business owners that, mm -hmm. you know, that own, um, uh, you know, restaurants, restaurants and, and they're very concerned. I've received phone calls as well as, as emails. And it's a very trying situation um, because they have seen their patron numbers drop down. Mm -hmm. um, they're not having the customers to come in like 
um, they used to. So we're just asking everyone um, to just to use due diligence. Um, we are looking at resources to see um, how the city of Myanmar can perhaps um, provide some assistance. Um, those decisions have not been finalized um, yet, um, but I did hear as well um, that uh, the governor um, at the state of Florida is looking at putting out an initial um, $50 million uh, fund out for small wow. businesses that would make available $50,000 um, as, as a bridge loan. Um, okay. It'll be a zero interest rate um, um, loan that just would so be paid back payroll. just to keep cash flows mm -hmm. yeah. for cash flow uh, purposes. Mm -hmm. um, we, as soon as those details are made available um, to the city of Myanmar, we'll make sure to, in our economic development department, to push that information out so that our businesses who may qualify for that okay. assistance can, can have um, access to it. Okay, sounds good. And Romeo, mm -hmm. I want to uh, also talk about the I guess the role that you guys are going to have as far as emergency managers and dealing with the public and, and even the city because mm -hmm. uh, you know people are worried about will we have people here ha has the decision been made and I guess the mayor may know this both of you together to whether to send our employees home or mm -hmm. Um, to just shut down the city yeah. in general? Well, obviously, as a municipality, um, the city of Myanmar, we are the first line of defense, the first line of providing um, civic services. Um, so our city manager is, uh, has a plan in place mm -hmm. that is, um, is identifying what essential services um, that um, need to be um, operational. These, these things are already known from our experience in dealing with e state of emergencies. Um, in terms of our city staff, we're very concerned about our city staff. We, are, um, we have assets in place to um, allow those um, employees that can work from home to work from home, as well as uh, putting into place um, uh, workforce or workplace um, protocols in terms of keeping our city staff that will be in any of our municipal facilities, um, the, the proper distances. Um, we have um, uh, um, disinfectant um, resources to keep areas clean, you know, um, keeping the social distancing, you know, <laughs> yeah, practice explain, in place. Explain <laughs> that, Romeo, please, because we, yeah. we made fun when we came in here because everybody literally said hi to each other like this. The social distancing. Right, per the that. CDC, this, mm -hmm. they, they recommend naturally that there be a distance between everyone. Look at <laughs> as evidence <laughs> here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just to, in a, uh, an abundance of caution, as mm -hmm. always, mm -hmm. to prevent contamination, six feet or more, okay. six to ten feet would be a nice buffer okay. between people, okay. just in case, so to avoid any droplets or anything like that mm -hmm. through uh, sneezing, coughing, or anything like that. Okay. So, yeah, social, so the social distancing, it's us here, as well as, as the mayor had just mentioned, why the a lot of large or, uh, restaurants and uh, organizations, why they're looking at closing them down to foster that social okay. distancing. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so what you would encourage people to do, the first thing is if they are feeling any type of symptoms mm -hmm. or think that they are feeling them, what do you suggest that they do? For, yes, For the first thing, if they feel, if, they, if they're thinking that they're feeling under the weather, mm -hmm. the first thing they should do naturally is to check themselves and see if this is not right, then definitely check your, uh, go to the hospital, check okay. yourself out. But in more, nine times out of 10, depending on your age and your condition, mm -hmm. it's usually just the flu and then self-quarantine. Do what you normally do. You would mm -hmm. stay at home, you would rest, take a lot of liquids, sleep, okay. um, get to get over the flu. Now, if you feel that you're exhibiting some of the, the COVID ID symptoms, there's a hotline that you can call through Broward County okay. that can get that info that you can uh, give these conditions to, and then they can guide you even further, and they may even direct you to go to your local hospital or to your doctor. Okay. Yeah, I can't stress enough mm -hmm. for our residents to follow the recommendations of the, the CDC, the CDC mm -hmm. as well as yes. the Florida Department of yes. Health. And the Florida Department of Health has a hotline number, mm -hmm. and that number is 866 779-6121, that's 866-779-6121. And um, I did want to mention, um, however, that the city, you know, we have a very active senior community. Mm -hmm. um, we have our Sunset Lakes Community Center and our multi-service center, and we have uh, nearly 300 um, seniors that we have, very active senior. We take they're them on field trips, day. we they're shop here, they're here most. every day, <laughs> yeah. and we've had to suspend those services. Okay. However, in terms of them coming to our city facility, because it's, 
each location has over 100. Mm -hmm. So we had to avoid bringing all those at-risk residents into one, one location. But our social services mm -hmm. department is providing meals um, for those mm -hmm. seniors that are on the meal program. Mm -hmm. um, we will go shopping um, for them so they can get grocery shopping because that can be a very daunting mm -hmm. task, especially mm -hmm. right now with there being a short supply at many of our um, restaurants, I mean, our, our, our supermarkets mm -hmm. and right. places mm -hmm. where we buy our goods and our sub sub supplies. So we're trying to maintain those services um, so that the residents, our seniors, our most vulnerable, you know, can have a meal and can be able to be taken care of at their home. Our adult daycare center, um, that still remains open. Mm -hmm. We are still providing services for our residents that are there. That is a health care facility. The, the residents that are there at that center cannot be left home alone. So we have our health care professionals employed by the city at that location that okay. are giving them the utmost care. Okay. Well, and if you would like more information about what the city of Miramar is doing for the COVID-19 virus, also known as coronavirus, you can always go to our website at miramarfl.gov. That's M-I-R-A-M-A-R-F-L.gov. You can also call 954-602-HELP. That's 602 H E L P. That is our information line that is manned 24 hours, and uh, people will be answering that and helping you as well, keeping you abreast of what's happening with the city services. If the city will be closing or not, of course, we will have uh, the mayor back on and also Romeo if that does happen. But right now, everything is status quo. We, everybody is working, as you can tell. Yes, <laughs> we are yes. all at work. So uh, thank you so much, Mayor Messam. We appreciate it. And thank you, Romeo Lavaris. Um, the emergency manager for our fire department for the city of Miramar and for the city. So please, if you have any more questions or if you do want more information, miramarfl.gov. And until next time, I'm Tamara G with Good Morning Miramar. We'll see you later.